Welcome to Market Call. It's Kim Bolton today. And of course, we're talking tech stocks. Kim with Black Swan Dexteritas. There he is. Uh, the number to get them, 1-855-326-6266. Or you can email Kim Market Call at bnnbloomberg.ca. Kim, thanks very much indeed for joining us once again. Always a pleasure to work with you, Andy. Thank you. Let's put up a 10-year graph of the NASDAQ 100 as a proxy for tech stocks. Now, I know it, it's a vast array of companies. You can't really generalize. But is there momentum behind tech stocks right now? Well, that's a good word because uh, that seems to be what's carrying it, is the momentum behind it. Um, you know, there, there are, of course, some fundamental and technical criteria that come into it, but these days um, they're sort of taking a back seat behind the momentum and all the stimulus that is being thrown into the market. You know, you've had so many headlines from Hurricane Ida to China to the Delta variant. You had that massive miss by the U.S. payrolls last Friday. Um, but markets just seem to yawn at these events and throw it away and and uh, the momentum has carried you know even from the technical side you know the s p 500 is has broken up uh, uh above resistance and certainly the tech has that mm -hmm. upward momentum long term and and you know it's sort of breaking and broken out but you know not in an in a, an excited way so um and even large, you know, large caps are, are back into overbought territories. So we would rather sort of wait for some mean reversion before putting new money to work. That's why currently we're uh, just over 92% invested, uh, but we also have a 64% short equity indice hedge um, just to sort of protect on the, on the, on the downside. What does that mean when you say a 64% short equity hedge? So how much, say the market dropped 20%, what would you expect your portfolio to do? Uh, okay, uh, it's a great question. If, uh, you know, if the market were to drop sort of three to 7%, we would definitely lose a bit of money, but certainly not to the same degree as, as the market. Really when it sort of goes beyond that 7% uh, downdraft, uh, that is where our sort of laddered NASDAQ put option positions really start to kick in. And so really above 7%, uh, our portfolio starts to make money and certainly um, if it goes down 20%, if you go back to last March of, uh, you know, March of 2020, we actually came out of, uh, out of March with just over an 8% um, rise in, in our net asset value. Where do you see, is there any area of undervaluation in, um, in the tech market right now? <laughs> yeah, yes, there is. Um, and it's in it's it's in some of the stocks that um, have not very well been liked, and so you can see some of the uh, some of the players try start to gravitate over into sort of the unliked tech area. Um, but in the same breath, uh, because there's so much money sloshing around in the market, um, you know the large cap. Is, is really uh, running the roost right now. So you got the FANG stocks that uh, keep on going up um, because they, they have the liquidity, uh, both on the upside and the downside. Um, and so that's where the, the, that's where the money goes. You know, we, this, uh, this year has, has really not been as much of an investment year in the technology arena and more of a trading uh, uh, period of time. What I mean by that is that so many of our stocks uh, will reach their price target. And so, you know, we take the money off the table and we go back to the watch list and the shopping list that actually uh, tells us where the uh, where the upsides are. You know, one of the one of the places that there is tremendous upside is, of course, over in the Chinese technology arena. Um, but we've uh, stayed away from that um, because of the because of the political risk. What an amazing story, isn't it? The Chinese regime cracking down on, on video game use among youth, if that's 
what's happening here. I may, I'm sure I'm missing some elements. Yeah, but it's, you know, the, the Chinese government comes in and does this every sort of two to three, four years, where they just come in and flex their mus muscle and they say, hey, you got to understand that we're driving the bus here. And, uh, and you're only a passenger. So um, it's not something that is unusual. It certainly gets a lot of headlines. Um, mm -hmm. And when, when you get wind of that, um, for us, it's best just to get out of the way and let the, let the dust, su dust settle. Yeah, it's a, you're right. Um, they like to just show who's boss, as you put it. Yeah, we're going to exactly. take a break. Kim Bolton of Black Swan Dick Services taking your questions on tech stocks. one 326 6266 We'll be right back. Kim Bolton is taking your questions today on tech stocks. one 326 6266 We have an email from Chad on WeCommerce, trades on the venture under the symbol WE. Um, and this is one of the companies that works within the so-called ecosystem of Shopify. Tell us about them, Kim. Do you, are you a buyer of the stock? Thanks, Andy. And Chad, thanks for the, uh, for the email. Um, so WeCommerce, we don't we don't own it. Uh, currently trading just shy of twelve dollars. We've got a price target of just over thirteen dollars, thirteen dollars and eleven cents. Um, there are some others that actually have higher price targets. Uh, I think it's uh, Canaccord has it all the way up to about twenty dollars. So yes, WeCommerce has some of their uh, uh, business, and it's in a business unit called Themes. Um, that uh, that is involved in the Shopify Unite ecosystem. Um, you know, they reported, WeCommerce reported their uh, Q2 back on August 2026, 20, uh, and it was actually that themes business, that themes business unit that is associated with Shopify um, that really sort of... Uh, 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 impacted the negatively the uh, the revenue, but um, they did um, manage to make some changes over on the Shopify Unite and manage management on the call highlighted return of momentum on the themes business unit after you know those changes around the announced uh, by uh, by Shopify. But you know they have other business streams in app and services that have uh, performed very well. Uh, on their call, they talked about their new CFO that is coming in and about their M&A pipeline, uh, and they're going to be very active in that. Um, and so we sort of think that that miss on the, on the revenues were uh, were just sort of temporary, and and you know the operational profile of uh, of WeCommerce still looks. You know, relatively strong, especially with the addition of stamped and and archetype and and so on. Um, so, would I would I own it here? No. If it went down closer to around ten dollars, yes. And just to clarify, they provide services to vendors on Shopify system. Correct. Through through that no business uh, business unit called Themes. We have an email from Josh in Vancouver, uh, wants to know about C3AI, and I guess it's artificial intelligence. Remind us what they do. Yeah, uh, C3AI, you probably see a lot of their commercials, and uh, yes, uh, they, together with Palantir, they both sort of came out last fall in IPOs. Um, and, you know, C3AI, you know, it shot all the way up to, you know, it, it, it came out at around, uh, oh gosh, it was around $50, shot all the way up to $170. Um, and then it's, it's basically lost about 70% uh, since then. Um, you know, it's, it's, its downfall is really a reflection of sort of middling results and its relatively tiny traction within its market. Although they just announced this week 
uh, a collaboration with uh, with Google. Um, but you know, C three AI has a very sort of concentrated uh, customer concentra uh, uh, customers in there, and it still remains a bit of a consistent problem on that. You know, I think it was back in uh, January of this year that we suggested um, or recommended a position in, in C3 AI. So we actually bought into it at 130. I said, you know, if it goes down to 110, 110, 120, 110, I'd add to it. It didn't go down there, but we had to take profit up at 147. Uh, but after, since then, we've sort of stood aside and, and we've concentrated on what we really consider to be the premier uh, artificial intelligence uh, player out there, which is Palantir. However, here we are down at $51. You do, you know, C3AI is obviously approaching a, a viable valuation level um, that puts it in sort of the mid-teens of this year's revenue. So, you know, for those that are brave, perhaps uh, take a position here, but have a very, very close stop loss down just below the recent lows. Uh, I'd say a stop loss around 50, uh, $43. Okay, but Palantir is, uh, is your favorite in that area. Peter yes. in Vancouver, go ahead, please. As usual, great show, great horse. Thank you. And great guest, Mr. Kim Borden, King of Technology. Kim, how is your son? Send my regards to him. I want to Thank congratulate you. you for picking UPST as your top pick last, last month. At 127, my God, today is 285, 285, <laughs> more than 100 percent. So today, can you <coughs> please? What do you think of this stock now? Can you buy in? Thank you, Mr. Kim Borden, the Great. <laughs> Upstart Holdings. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Good to hear your voice. Um, so upstart, uh, we still own it. However, we've written calls on about three quarters of our position. You know, it's currently trading above our uh, our our price our twelve month price target. You know, we've got a twelve month price target of uh, um, uh, two sixty eight, and it's currently trading. Uh, now at 285, so we we actually put on a uh, a 280 uh, uh, call on three quarters of our position. Let me just sort of back up. Uh, Upstart um, is a very revolutionary data analytics solution for the banking system, and, and it provides analytical tools to assess borrowers' credit worthiness using their Upstart's proprietary AI tools. Um, it currently participates in the personal loan market, but it's rapidly penetrating into the massive auto loan market. Um, and so, you know, they, they usually lay off most of their loans, about 20% of their loans are laid off or retained by banks. The other sort of 75% are acquired, acquired by institutional investors, and they have about 5% of the loans on their books. Um, the reason it's so popular is that its AI models uh, actually reduce default rates by 175%. Um, and so it's become very, very much a, f a favorite of, uh, of financial institutions out there. It's, it's a great, great, great story. And would you be a buyer right now? No, I wouldn't buy it right now. Um, as I said, we still own it because I don't want to lose the position, but I've written calls mm -hmm. about three, against oh, about, yeah. about three quarters of the position. Sorry, I forgot you said that. Okay, we are going to take a break. Uh, Kim Bolton is taking your questions on technology stocks, one 326 6266 Let's head to Truro, Nova Scotia, where David is standing by. Go ahead, David. 
Thank you so much for taking my call. I'd like to ask the guest about uh, NVIDIA versus uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. I should have bought NVIDIA skyrocket and then split. I had bought it uh, at a higher level, and uh, Taiwan uh, has been a kind of a dog compared to it. I sold Taiwan this morning. Would you add to the position of NVIDIA, or would you go with one of your top picks? Uh, with uh, the money that I have uh, on the sale of the Taiwan Semiconductor. I'll hang up and listen to your information for me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your call. So NVIDIA versus TSMC, and you've taken some money off the table on TSMC. Um, this is a long, long um, possible answer, but I'll try to keep it as short as possible. So, uh, NVIDIA, we actually think is quite rich uh, up at this level. And actually, in the whole semiconductor ecosystem, you know, all the way from the foundries to the designers to the integrated manufacturers, um, we really think you're at a bit of a crossroads. We, and we've actually pared back our our semiconductor uh, position. We had about a third of the portfolio dedicated to that at the beginning of the summer, and now uh, we're down to about uh, about 20%. And the reason for it is that you can see it in the pricing. The pricing is becoming more competitive. Um, but, you know, the semiconductor space, which is really sort of the transport index of, 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 of today, um, is uh, it takes a long time to turn that ship. And so a lot of people are talking about how, because it's a cyclical business, that probably within a year, that that imbalance on the supply and demand is really become more balanced. And right now, the demand is certainly more than the supply. But you can see going out six months from now that you're going to have a balance. And that's starting to get reflected uh, over into uh, um, uh, over into the, 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 the pricing side of things, of, of, the, of the various chips. Now, NVIDIA. Is, is really the, uh, the the leader when it comes to the designers out there. Uh, it's the biggest semiconductor company market cap around. Um, but as a result, it's become quite rich. I'll tell you what we actually did do. Um, you know, it's one thing to take some profit off the table, but uh, you need to find a place to actually put it. And now that interest rates are somewhat stable, um, but you have to keep an eye on that, um, we really sort of put more money over into the cloud stack, into the infrastructure and the platform players and the, and the communications software players. So that's where we've sort of gravitated and taken the money out of the out of the semi side and over into the software. I hope that helps. Okay, let's head to Collingwood, Ontario. Glenn, go ahead, please. Good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Kim, for for someone who is uh, taking a uh, half position in Alibaba at uh, two hundred, based on my thought that the valuation was only one third of uh, Amazon. Uh, notwithstanding the uh, the current uh, political risk, would you uh, sell your uh, shares or would you uh, double down? Appreciate your uh, your comment. Thank you. Okay. Um, so just uh, from our side, back uh, it was it was right at the end of June, the beginning of July. Um, because we've seen this uh, this movie before where the uh, the Japanese government you know decides to Thanks. show everyone who's boss they uh, um, we actually took our money out of Alibaba it was up about two it was around 217 uh, it's very very tempting to actually buy into it down at these levels um, and you know a lot of people think that it's quite uninvestable because of the uncertainties from the political side of, side of things. However, uh, recently, actually, the Chinese government just took a stake in Ant, which is the uh, uh, the, the, the e-commerce, the financial side of, of Alibaba. So, uh, and we know that a lot of American banks, like J.P. Morgan, have huge stakes in in, in the company. Um, but the bad press. 
surrounding the whole China thing, thing seems to be dying down. And, and I believe that, and if you actually look at Alibaba on the charts, it seems to be forming that double bottom. Um, however, for us, we would much rather see the market start to gravitate up. And if it can really sort of stretch beyond that sort of 280, 285, to, uh, sorry, 180, 185, 190 level, that was a, a real sort of support level before, that is where we would get more interested. So you own it here. I wouldn't double down. I'd let the market actually tell you that it's OK. OK, sorry, what, what do you mean? You think the the worst is over for Alibaba, in other words? Well, technically, it does look for look like that because it's it's got a double bottom. Sure. But um, but you know, I would much rather buy it when there's some momentum behind the stock, and and mm -hmm. the chart is pointing up. Right, that's where I would instead of trying to catch a falling knife. I would let the charts tell you that it's okay to come back in. And I think a break above 185 will tell you that. Jordan is standing by in Calgary. Go ahead, Jordan. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, Line Electric. Uh, their share price has seen a significant decline since going public to the SPAC. Uh, and they're in the midst of building a new production facility in the U.S., along with securing a nine-figure credit line. Uh, do you feel this is a hold if already invested or potentially cut losses and possibly purchase at a significantly lower price in the future? Uh, thanks, and I'll, I'll wait your response. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so Lion is currently trading at, uh, wow, $11. Um, we don't own own it in our uh, in our technology fund. We do have some clients and separately managed accounts that really wanted to buy it. Um, and it's and it again, this is more of a technical uh, uh, play, I believe. Anyway, Line Electric is a it's an electric truck company that's out of Montreal, and it also, as uh, as Jordan mentioned, has uh, manufacturing capabilities down in Illinois. Um, it's, a, it's a good story, uh, but like some of these SPACs, has really sort of gone into a free fall. Um, everyone thought it was going to sort of hold that $15 level a couple of weeks ago, and here it is down at uh, down $11. So, uh, if you own it, I guess you'd hang on for dear life. And um, I wouldn't buy it down here, though. I'd, I'd let the charts tell you that it's found a bottom. And then when it starts to go back up and goes back through hopefully 15, um, that will tell you that the, the bottom has, uh, has arrived. Margaret is calling from Vancouver. Go ahead, Margaret, please. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, I am interested in ASML, but recently it has gone up a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm not, uh, I want to know what is the future prospect and uh, if I, uh, if I want to get into, is that a good time to go into or is not? Uh, if not, when is a good time to go into or what can be an alternative? Thank you. Thanks. Interesting. Um, ASML uh, involved in the uh, in the semi side. It has the uh, it's it's primarily on the equipment manufacturing side, and and on the on the uh, litho or light uh, emitting uh, uh, equipment for the for the semi uh, manufacturers and also for the foundries. Um, you're right. It's really sort of, uh, it's, it's taken off, it's done very well. Uh, we've owned it, we've actually pared back and taken about two thirds of the position off uh, as it approaches price target. Um, so I would hold on, be very, very careful uh, as I was talking before that you may, this is a very cyclical business even in the equipment manufacturer side of it. Um, 
And so you might want to either take some money off the table um, or maybe write some calls against, uh, against your position. Okay, so just um, hedge it, hedge it, so that at least if, it's, if it goes down, you've earned some income. That's correct, yep. Okay, let's take a break. We're going to have a look at how Kim Bolton's past picks did. You're watching Marco Call. Kim was on our show last September. His first idea was the video game giant Activision Blizzard. Kim, would you buy this one again? Uh, yes. Um, we did own it. We got out. And then we're back in here right around the uh, the $80 level. But I, I, I do it in tranches, actually. You know, I'd, I'd buy some here, I add to it down at sort of 72, 65, and, and then down at 57. You know, the main reason it's sort of how it's been on hard times is, is because of those terrible press, press uh, releases that came out about you know, the, the toxic work environment and the CEO was getting paid exorbitant amounts and it just uh, dragged on the stock. But, you know, the fundamentals remain otherwise very, very strong. You know, it has those flagship franchises of Call of Duty and World of Warcraft and Candy Crush. And, um, you know, it's it's the world's largest third party video game publisher. It's got it's, it's got 430 million monthly active users across its platforms. Mm. So it's it's a massive company. Um, and they just need to put some um, uh, distance behind all of this bad press that, that comes out. So, yes, I would build a position down here, mm -hmm. but I'd do it in sort of tranches going down. Um, we, um, you already talked about NVIDIA, this one working out. You reckon it's the biggest long-term growth story in semiconductors? Yeah, it's... Uh, you know, it's going to be in uh, MBA schools is one of the greatest secular growth stories in the whole semiconductor business. And it's, you know, it's, it's riding the tailwinds, including the transition in the GPU into the data center and the gaming and the edge computing, autonomous vehicles, cryptocurrencies and AI, right? Those are all the buzz ones that everyone is, uh, is, is so excited about. And they are the premier designer for these chips out there. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, the semiconductor is a highly cyclical in nature. And uh, and we just think that we're close to a peak uh, on the, on this demand cycle. So, um, you know, NVIDIA's growth rates uh, may run into some difficulties going out there. But, you know, the, the, they arguably have the best CEO in the semiconductor business. Uh, their financials look uh, look terrific, um, but we've actually written again. We've sort of written some calls against our position, so we still hold the position, but we've written some calls against it. Um, and then we do have some cash, and if it does run into some problems, yes, we'd love to buy this at lower levels. Uh, you know, we have a, a price target on this of uh, of two hundred and thirty two dollars, and and uh, and it's sitting right here at 223. So we've written about half of our position on calls. Your final idea splunk this one down marginally, um, and they specialize in gathering data in a company within a company and then giving it to executives in a form they can use. Yeah. Um, we bought a one third of a position down here at 155, and we'll add to it if it goes down to sort of to 140, and then and then down to 125. But you know, Splunk is the essential 
machine data company. And it's been growing like a weed despite its scale. And it's finding tremendous success in converting its previous license-based software model into that subscription software as a service model. Um, but there's four reasons that we really like it. Number one, the use cases for Splunk, Splunk are infinite. Number two, Splunk isn't without competitors, but you know its focus is on visualizing and analyzing machine data. Um, and it's interesting, uh, just recently it's hired several very, very well-known executives out of Microsoft and Amazon. So when I, you know, you sort of follow the smart people and when we see people like that taking leader, leadership positions over at Splunk, um, it really gives us a, a great deal of comfort. Uh, thirdly, you know, the growth at scale. And then fourthly, you know, the management always has profitability in mind. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, we expect that uh, it has a target of hit, hitting a billion in, in annual operating cash flows by uh, fiscal 2023. So, uh, you know, the valuation continues to be reasonable. So this is one of those, this is one of those uh, growth stocks that almost uh, uh, perks up as a value stock. As we, as we talked about before, Andy, um, you know, there are segments of the technology arena that look rich, but then there are some companies out there like Spunk, Splunk that uh, that have that growth tra trajectory, but are almost considered value at the end because they're cheap down here. Okay, almost considered value. We are going to be right back. <laughs> Kim Bolton is taking your questions on Tech Stocks, one 326 6266 Brian in Beaverton, Ontario. Go ahead, please. Could I have your guest thoughts on C Limited? Does he see any more upside, or is it time to get out? Thank you. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. Um, C Limited, what a fantastic run it's had. Um, really, for the last couple of years. Here it is, sitting at uh, 325 US. Uh, we 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 have a 12-month price target of uh, 377. So it's still got some runway in front of it. Um, C Limited. This is the uh, I don't know. It's it's sort of like an Amazon or Shopify, but it also has you know some other business units. It, and it, it, it's headquartered out of. Uh, uh, Southeast Asia and, and Singapore, um, but it really has three sort of horses in the in the race. It has the online online gaming through uh, Jarena. It has the e-commerce through Shopee business unit, and then the digital payments product um, through uh, uh, C C Money and and AirPay. Um, you know, all three divisions of C have just had a fantastic run and are still pretty early in their in their development and deployment but they you know they're starting to expand inter internationally um, that uh, Shopee which is the e-commerce side is really getting huge down in South America it's also launched into Mexico uh, while well, it's been in Colombia and Argentina and Brazil uh, it's going to launch soon in India on that e-commerce platform. So um, this is this is a core holding that uh, people should have in, the, in their portfolio. Um, you can see it on the charts. It does have some volatility, so it does allow you to actually take some money off the off the table. But I would definitely keep a position uh, in it just to keep it on on your radar. Um, so yes, I, I I love this company, C Limited. Let's go to Gary in Gatineau. Fire ahead, please. Hello, first time caller. Um, I'd, like to know the lo I'd like to know the long term things on Apple stock, please. 
Thanks, Gary. Um, well, next week is the uh, the big launch for their iPhone 13 uh, next uh, next Tuesday. Um, so here we are sitting what around 154, 155. Uh, we have a 12 month price target of 164. So there's a bit of a runway in front of it, but. Uh, I think you'd actually, Gary, I think you'd actually find uh, um, over the fall here some opportunity to actually add to your position. You know, Apple is facing some potential headwinds regarding its Apple store take rate. But, you know, the, these issues in the Apple store are nothing new for the company. And even though the iPhone is still the key revenue and profit drivers, you know, you have to watch how they're doing on their fast-growing services segment. Um, and Apple needs to demonstrate it, that it can grow this services uh, segment quickly moving forward to justify its premium valuation. And it is rich, it, you know. Um, but, you know, when, when you look at the growth and you look at the earnings power of this, having a forward price earnings ratio of almost 28 times isn't that concerning. However, the surging peg ratio is a bit of a concern for, uh, for us. You know, the peg ratio is a valuation measurement that compares the company's price earnings ratio to its expected earnings growth rate. And Apple's forward peg ratio has absolutely surged this year up to 5.51. So that is a bit of a concern for us. Um, so we watch it very carefully. I haven't written any calls against Apple yet, but it's certainly on our on our mind. Uh, you know, given the valuation right now, it's it's hard to justify a buy rating right here. But we don't discourage anyone from betting against this company either. So I hope that helps. Sorry, you. so the uh, oh, sorry, Kim. So the P, the Ford P on Apple about 28 yep. times and yep, yep, yep. um, what is the estimated growth rate for apple's earnings uh the estimated well depending on the you know if, if you take a blend i guess through the whole thing it's sitting right about 30 percent 30 percent okay and so i'm trying to think and that would give you a peg ratio of about five times yeah just over five times Okay, and yeah, that does look... Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's rich, right? That's rich. Yeah, sounds it's rich by that measure. For, for sure, it sounds rich. Kim Bolton is our guest today on a Market Call. He's taking your questions on Tech Stocks, one 326 6266 Okay, uh, we've, we're, we're tight for calls, uh, tight for time. I'm sorry about that. Um, we have Bernard uh, calling from London. Um, go ahead, Bernard. Good afternoon. I want to complain that my daughter has invested in your, your, your fund and has done much better than I have. So thank you very much for her. <laughs> my, uh, my question, though, is that I would want to know if I should get some more Z-Scaler. Ah, Thank okay. Um, okay, so uh, Zscaler, just help me here, Andy. Uh, where's the trading right now? Uh, we'll look that up right now. Is that us? Oh, it's uh, 280, 280. And, 280 uh, yeah, and we have a... It's rich. So um, we've actually taken some profit on this. We have, uh, so if it's trading at 280, we actually have a 12 month price target of 270. You know, um, I'll just back up. Zscaler is, uh, you know, it's really benefiting from, you know, the proliferation of users outside of the traditional, traditional corporate network. Um, and as a result, employees have been, uh, you know, they've been using this cloud native cybersecurity company um, uh, that has an app that works on the network 
um, and its value of proposition is really enhanced by the corporate security through the through the network architecture. But it's also a relatively lower total cost versus sort of the competition out there. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's really become a favorite because of both the combination of its software as a service, but also for its cybersecurity side. And uh, it's it's geared toward both enterprises, but also to the retail side of things. So it's just got a great following. Um, so I'd recommend if you have it, I would recommend maybe writing some calls on some of your position. And uh, but if it actually comes down closer to that sort of 200 to 220 le level, uh, I would keep that on, on your radar. OK, I think we've got to take a break. We're going to get Kim, uh, Kim Bolton's top picks right after this. Kim's first top pick is Square Incorporated. Uh, thanks. You know, I, I mentioned a few times during uh, the last hour that um, you know, the market in places uh, starts to get rich and overbought and so on. But there are some places to uh, to find some value. Uh, number one, Square. You know, this is a great fintech company. It has strong growth pros prospects across its, you know, seller and cash app businesses. But then it just reinforced the whole thing with the agreement to buy after pay, you know, the uh, buy now, pay later Australian company. So, you know, I, I really mm -hmm. see Square as one of the main disruptors in the banking system, uh, really around the world. And it, and it means that over the long term, you know, this company has the potential to become one of the largest financial companies in the world. Um, there's lots that I could talk about it, but what I would recommend is that uh, you make sure you got a position in Square here at around 260, but I'd also add to it down at 240 and also at 220. Your next idea is Twilio. They have technology to allow users to integrate all their, their communications, including phone calls, etc. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Twilio you know, this platform, communications platform, you know, is fast becoming like the uh, the AWS, the Amazon Web Services of the communications world. Uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. the op operating system for the digital world. A lot of volatility in this. And um, I think I recommended it about a year and a half ago, but it's, uh, it, it, it's a trading stock. Uh, it's not something that you can uh, just sort of buy and hold. Um, but, you know, if you see it uh, down toward, we have a $460 12-month price target. Uh, if you can get, if you can mm -hmm. pick it up between 350 and 300, um, there it would be an investment. Online services have revolutionized dating. Uh, you think Match Group has upside? Yeah, and you know, so does the market though. Um, you know, online dating has become one of the most powerful secular trends that I can think of right now. If, if only, you know, if one really thinks about it, the, the pandemic brought really a halt to the concept of going out on a date as mm -hmm. social distancing became the norm, you know. But, you know, as the worst of the pandemic seems behind us and people are increasingly getting vaccinated, online dating um, mm -hmm. is, is really an area that is ripe for huge, uh, huge upswing. Um, um, so, you know, and, and you can see it in the results, you know, they posted strong revenues in their second uh, quarter uh, reports and, you know, match trades for around 11 times forward earnings. Um, they just bought mm -hmm. and they're growing. They just bought this Korean based uh, hyper connect uh, that should help increase its, you know, total addressable market mm -hmm. and certainly through Asia. Um, it, it was just actually earlier this week mm -hmm. uh, announced that the stock was going to move into the S&P 500. So it actually jumped uh, about 8% on mm -hmm. Tuesday. Uh, but it's got good momentum behind it. I buy a third of a position here around 160, add to it around 140, and then another final third around 120. Did I make yeah, it before in time? We go, and we... Sorry, yeah, we've only about 20 seconds. Just on an Apple peg ratio, I'm confused. Can you clarify for me if the, if the uh, PE is, is about 30, call it that, 28, and the earnings growth rate is 30%, doesn't that give you a peg ratio of about one or closer to one? 
Uh, no. So uh, forward PE of uh, 27.8, you know, depending on okay. where you look within uh, the various okay. growth rates and the, and, the, and the operating margin and so on, no, the peg ratio actually comes in at 5.51. Oh, okay. We'll have to disagree on that one. Or sorry, um, I, I, I'm probably missing <laughs> something there. Kim, thank you. And, oh, I, I defer to you. Uh, Kim, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Uh, you're most welcome, Andy. Good to be with you. Kim Bolton um, is our guest. Now, we did get, let's have a quick look at the markets before we go. Um, we did get what looked like encouraging numbers on US jobless claims, and that has been supporting stocks today. Um, you can see that the U big US and Canadian uh, bourses are up. Let me just check how close Toronto is to record territory, or are we on course for a record high close? Not really, no, because we closed Friday 20,821. So we are down about 100 points from that level, but still a pretty darn good year for Canadian and US stocks. Uh, Toronto's up 19% so far this year, and the S&P 500 is up just over 20%. Thanks very much indeed for watching our show. We'll be back with Brian Madden tomorrow.